All right, Pax09 rolls along, and I have snagged the CEO of Splash Damage and the game director of Brink, Paul Wedgwood. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good, thank you. So this is the first time you guys are showing Brink publicly. You've, you've had it at E3 in Germany, uh, at QuakeCon, but now anybody at PAX can come up and see this demo. What's the, the feedback that you're getting from the public that's getting their first glimpse of it? I mean, well, I mean, it's amazing, and I, I say that, you know, literally. Being an Englishman, I never <laughs> overdo it. <laughs> um, you know, in the past, when we've demonstrated the game, it's always been behind closed doors. We gave you a sneak preview, you know, back at E3 in Los Angeles, and it's really nice doing those in a kind of intimate small area, but then you come to something like PAX, and it's just amazing. I mean, we have we have a theater here that perhaps can take, you know, 30, 40 people, and then they're just out in the aisles, filling the aisles, then filling our neighboring stands and all watching the presentation as well. So it's really nice showing the game to such a big audience. Very cool. So you guys, I don't, I don't even know where to start with Brink. There are so many different aspects to the gameplay. But So you've got, uh, you've got some mechanics in there that ease the, the sort of traversal of obstacles. Uh, it's the... Uh, See if I can remember back to E3. Is it SMART? Is that, is that correct? What does that stand for? SMART. It stands for Smooth Movement Across Random Terrain. Thank you very much, so, Mr. Marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, I mean, I know that it kind of intelligently, you know, you'll slide under things or vault over them. Yeah. Is that is that something that the level designers, like, hand code into the design of each level, or does the engine figure that out as you're playing? No, it's completely dynamic, and really that's the whole point. With our past shooters, if we wanted you to be able to jump over something or climb over something, the level designer had to take that into account as they were building the level. And if you look at some competing shooters, you know, you have to have an entity everywhere that you can climb up a mantle over something or go underneath somewhere and go prone. What we wanted with Brink was really to give you, the player, the freedom to make the decision about where you went and how you played. So it's comprised of two kind of proprietary technologies. We dynamically trace the entire environment around you, working out what all of the opportunities are. And then we have a blended animation system to make sure it's not an autopilot. So you're not just pressing a button and the game's doing all the work for you. It just means that you can, you know, slide, mantle, vault in ways that you couldn't do previously in games, which allows you to be, you know, just a lot more fluid in your movement. So you guys, uh, if I understood correctly at E3, I mean, you've got a mission-based structure, but uh, and it's class-based, of course, but it seemed to me that you can play it essentially online or offline and get kind of the same experience. I mean, you're doing the same missions online or off. How does how does that balance out? Does it change a lot when you've got other people in there with you or the AI taking their places? What's you know, what's the model there? Well, so, so the basic premise of it is that we want to blur the lines between offline and online gaming. So it really doesn't matter if you've got no internet connection and you play it like a traditional single-player shooter or your friends can join you in real time. We have support for up to seven of your friends to drop in and out of your game, bringing all their cool upgrades and outfits and everything else. Or you can play online. Irrespective of whether you play, what you're doing is you you take on a combat role that suits your preferred playing style. So you could be a soldier on the front line. You know, if you think you've got great aim, pulling off wicked, you know, mid-air headshots and planting heavy explosive charges and blowing stuff up, or you could play a support role. You know, like an engineer deploying defense turrets on defense and putting down landmines and trying to protect an area. As you do so, you coordinate with your squad and you earn experience points. And these experience points can be spent on cool unlocks like weapons, weapon upgrades, uh, new abilities that let you specialize even further. And then as you complete these and you eventually start to level up, you earn these really cool outfits that kind of reflect what a badass you are. But because you can play the game from either side, resistance or security, whether you're playing offline or online, it supports full multiplayer mode, you know, where one squad is attacking and trying to get objectives completed and the other squad is trying to defend. So, at Splash Damage, obviously you guys are best known for the enemy territory stuff, you know, Wolfenstein and then uh, Quake Wars. Did you guys take any of the sort of core design tenets from, from that series and bring them in? Are there, obviously those games had a lot of players, are there common aspects they can look for that they'll be familiar with in the new game? Yeah, I think, well, you know, uh, spiritually, certainly at heart, we have always been obsessed with multiplayer shooters, and that's kind of always been what we've wanted to do. I started out back in 97 myself as a clan player in Quake 1. Um, but, so the game, you know, it certainly has that kind of class-based, objective-oriented gameplay. But as the developers of the PC games for Enemy Territory, we were really pleased with their success. I mean, 13.5 million downloads for Wolfenstein Enemy Territory isn't bad. But we just wanted to create something that was completely new. We wanted a brand new setting, a brand new art style. And we wanted to solve some of the problems that we'd seen in the past. You know, with you know, it, it's always a challenge when you build a game, for example, on the PC and then you port it to other platforms. And in the case of Brink, we wanted control over all three platforms in-house. We want it to be the guys that design the game from the ground up for the PlayStation 3, the PC, and the Xbox 360, and have parity across all three platforms. So it was brilliant to play, irrespective, you know, of which platform you were playing on. Uh, you guys are using uh, id software technology, is that correct? 
Yeah, we, we pretty much, when we built Enemy Territory Quake Wars for the PC, we worked pretty closely with it to develop technologies like the Mega Texture, um, which was a great idea from John Carmack. And Arnout Van Meer, our technical director, has basically continued on with the plan from that point. So where id Software went from id Tech 4, or the kind of Doom 3 origin engine, and they developed id Tech 5, we started off with id Tech 4, and we've branched off in a slightly different direction. But really just where we needed to build the engine for the specifics that we need for gameplay. We're still, you know, wholeheartedly a company that's obsessed with id Software and id Software technology. So you're, you're using an id engine, you're being published by Bethesda. Those two companies happen to be the same now. Was that just a... Uh a happy coincidence, or did you have any inkling that it was all going to converge this no, way? I, I really had no idea at all. I mean, we signed with Bethesda at the beginning of 2008, and they completed, you know, that transaction to, to acquire id Software just, you know, fairly recently. But it's worked out pretty good for us because, you know, if we have a conference call now, you like everybody that's on the call. <laughs> cool. So uh, you guys aren't shipping for a while. Uh, where are you at in development now? Uh, what, what is there to do? You know, what are the big things you got to get done now before ship, and then when is ship? Well, we're, we're what they call pre-alpha, which is really just a games industry word for saying not done yet, and you've still got time to improve stuff. So we have multiplayer playtests in the office. We might have maps that are just blocked out in grey. We have some that have been kind of coloured in, you could say, you know, to get that kind of great art style that we're showing with Container City. Um, as we start to kind of near alpha, we start nailing down some of the gameplay elements. So we might, we're still in that mode where we try crazy upgrades and crazy abilities and things and just see if they work, see if they're fun for a couple of weeks. If they're not, we cut them and we try something else. When we get to alpha, that's really where you've locked it down and now you're kind of starting to polish the game and get it ready for shipping. We're shipping the game on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC simultaneously in spring 2010. So obviously we've got a ton of work ahead of us. All right, well, I'll let you get back to it after you're done with all these crazy demos. So thanks, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers.